Do you think back to that commitment you made in spring practice, how you needed to be at your very best when it counts the most? It's November. Live from Scott Stadium in Charlottesville, Virginia, Lincoln Financial Sports and Raycom Sports proudly present ACC football, a team that answered that call a year ago, the Wake Forest Demon Deacons in town to take on the Virginia Cavaliers. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Steve Martin. Thanks for joining us for what should be a great afternoon of ACC football, the 46th meeting between Wake Forest and Virginia, but they haven't seen each other in four years because of expansion, putting them in two different divisions. Never has a game between these two meant so much, and here's why the road to Jacksonville Boston College leads Wake Forest by a game and a half actually in that division because they beat Wake Forest in opening day you see what Wake has left look to the coastal division Virginia's led it all season long now they're tied with Virginia Tech and all three of those schools Virginia Virginia Tech and Miami will meet each other in the remaining games in the month of November and of course joining me on today's telecast as always Rick Doc Walker it's amazing Doc what happens when you turn the page from October to November well it really exposes people if you're either a pretender or a contender. But it's time to move forward now, and the true champion will be crowned in this month. Well, let's take a look at our Toyota keys to the game. And as far as Wake Forest is concerned, they've got to keep track of Michael Simpson. Maryland didn't, and it cost them a win. It really did. Simpson has shown he's no one-game wonder. He has put some punch in the Cavaliers' offensive arsenal. He can beat you on the ground. He can beat you in the air. And, of course, for Virginia today, it's make Wake Forest be somewhat conventional. Yeah, this orbit offense will kind of get you off balance, take you off schedule, if you will. They've got to force them to play conventional and then get after them with their three-headed monster. Well, Virginia has won 13 of their last 16 at home. Wake Forest comes in here having won six straight. As the Virginia Cavaliers, seven and two, they've won 13 of their last 16 home games. They like it here in Whoville, and they hope it plays for a big win over Wake Forest this afternoon. We'll tell, I'll, I'll, we'll tell all that story in the next three and a half hours. Here to embellish it on the sideline from a defensive standpoint, Mike Hogwa. Yeah, the cheerleaders and flags run right in front of me. You can feel the intensity here for this game. And speaking of intensity, there are a couple of players on each team who really can bring that intensity. For Wake Forest, it's linebacker Aaron Curry. Two interceptions last week for North Carolina. One to the house. You can say Curry is the spice of the Wake Forest defense. Now when you talk about Virginia, you got to talk about Chris Long. He's a guy who not only leads the ACC in sacks, he is number three in the nation. He's going to try to get to Riley Skinner today. He also has made a habit of blocking some kicks as well. He has done everything on that defensive line for the Virginia Cavaliers. Steve, a couple of the great players we're going to watch, but it's going to be a real team battle here today. This is going to be a great game. Virginia, I think. Wake Forest in Virginia for the first time since 2003. And of course, an alumnus of Wake of Virginia is Wake Forest head football coach Jim Grove, graduated here 1974. He redshirted the freshman year and one of the coaches as a graduate assistant at Virginia was this man Al Grove head man. He also worked at Wake Forest in his first head coaching job in the college ranks 49 and 35 in his seventh season as a head of the Cavaliers. Virginia defers their option to the second half. Chris Gold will be kicking off and now he threatens a long kick and may kick this one short. They try to keep it away from Kevin Marion and said it goes to Kenny Moore at the 23. Kevin Marion's least amount of yards in the last four kickoff returns 46 yards so you can understand why Wake uh, Virginia gave up a little field position for that one Jared Dietrich on the tackle and let's take a look offensively at the Demon Deacons Kenneth Moore great all purpose back Josh Adams leading rusher D'Angelo Bryant Brinkman in there as well Steve Justice all ACC first team center with Frazier Brim McMillan and Joe Birdsong the quarterback from Jacksonville Beach Florida it is Riley Skinner and Skinner of course in his sophomore season, he stands right now second in the all-time wins list with 15, and he's completed 72% of his passes. Hand off Kevin Marion. He didn't get the kickoff, so he gets the first play of the game and heads to the corner before being driven out the 45-yard line, and there's a flag thrown in. In fact, two at the tail end of that play. I think Clint sent him the linebacker for the Cavaliers is probably the most underrated part of their defense. He's played spectacular football, and they couldn't hook him. Personal foul. Face mask. 
and 22 of the defense. First down. Walter Davenport is our referee today. It's going to call on his face mask. So you see 22 is out of bounds. So hard, you have all that energy pent up and you want to release it, but that's not smart for Virginia. Skinner, hands off. And this is Josh Adams, the redshirt freshman running back. That pushes them down to the 31 yard line. John Copper making the tackle. Let's take a look at the Virginia defense, the big one. Chris Long, a great front three with Jeffrey Fitzgerald and Alan Billick. Unbelievable player. John Copper leads them in tackles. Clint Sintim, Antonio Appleby, and Jermaine Dias are the linebackers. Chris Cook, after an injury, returns after two weeks out. Byron Glassby, Nate Lyles, and Vic Hall, the back four. Second down and about two. Wake Forest in Virginia territory thanks to a penalty. And Josh Adams finds no going there as number 91 Chris Long and 54 John Copper make the stop for the Virginia Cavaliers. It's down three Steve. Not only can they put exceptional pressure on the quarterback but they play the run well. They're going to force you to beat them and beat them for four quarters. And this young man here man I really just to spend some time with him at the ACC league meetings. He is legit. Oh, I mean down. class act hard worker good student. And will pound you into the ground. And right now they have to defend on third and inches. This Wake Forest team, very efficient. One of the best in the ACC at 42%. Josh Adams is the running back as Riley Skinner surveys. And Fitzgerald on the other side, equally as talented. Up front three for Virginia, very good. Skinner will call his own number. He needed maybe his room key to get to the 29 yard line. He's going to get a first down and move the chains. Most misleading part about Wake Forest, in my opinion, no weaknesses. Now you watch that offensive line. These guys got a little high, but they were effective in that. You want low man usually wins this battle. There you see 91 who won his. He has great leverage. The Wake Forest doesn't have an obvious weakness. They are balanced across the board. First and ten at the 29 of Virginia. Skinner to the flats to Marion. Marion tries to get away but uh, goes down at the 25 yard line. Razai Dawling, the true freshman from Chesapeake, Virginia, who's come in and played in place of Chris Cook and has done an admirable job at corner, makes the tackle. That wasn't easy, folks. He made it look easy. But when you put a steel guy out in space, it's very difficult to get him down. He did a very nice job. Second down, call it six. No score, but Wake Forest driving on their first possession of the afternoon. Hand off Adams. Bounces outside to the right, but it'll be short of the first down. Runs into Byron Glasby, the junior out of Basking Ridge, New Jersey. Train of about three. Now we understand why Coach Grove held his kid back. Wouldn't take his red shirt off a year ago. Oh, he's special. He was so good that he took he took a wide receiver from him. From running but from wide receiver and put him in a running back spot. D'Angelo Bryant, there's Josh Adams. Redshirt freshman from Cary, North Carolina. Short yardage, third down again. Handoff Adams. Got the first down and on maybe a yard extra. On third and two, he gets it down to the 19-yard line. Tackle made by Razai Dowling. You talk about the orbit offense. It would lead people to think that they're a gadget team. No, they're not, folks. They will knock you off the ball, bloody your nose, hit you right in the face. That's Wake Forest football. Now, they just happen to have a lot of talent behind those big uglies, but their premise is that they can beat you at the line of scrimmage. They don't have to trick you. That's why they're exceptional. But as Al Gross said to us in our Wednesday conference call, he said they want to trick you. They want to make you look at all that other stuff. And really they're a very basic football team and they're good. Here's Josh Adams gets it out to the 15 yard line. Thing you want to do is you want to keep UVA out of those second and long passing situations. And you look at uh, what Jim Grove's teams have done in three games they've done pretty well on the ground at 4.6 a rush 257 yards a game. Well, that's cutting there. That's nice. Well, you want to get north of four. And they are. So far this afternoon, they're doing pretty well as well. Second and seven. Hand off Adams. Adams falls ahead down to about the 11, maybe close to the 10. 
If so, that's another five yards. It'll bring up the third third down on this drive. Jeffrey Fitzgerald on the tackle. The thing that both teams exhibit is that this is going to be a fourth quarter game. You're not going to blow either of them out. You're not going to get too far ahead. They're going to fight you for four quarters. This is sparring right now, but it's a pretty impressive drive by the Demon Deacons to come here on the road and show you they've got a little, little dog in them. Brinkman is the wide out to the left side. The wing back to that side or slot receiver is Kenny Moore. Back to throw Skinner for a second time today. Pump fake, cuts it down and throws it to the fans. Wow. I don't think I've seen a quarterback have that much time against the Cavaliers. No, but uh, the defensive backs are doing their job. They did a great job. They did a great job. But this is. I mean, this is the clash of the Titans as far as I'm concerned. Two teams, everything on the line, trying to prove yourself. And I think this is a great statement for the Cavaliers to have held them to a field goal. Well, they do this a lot. Uh, teams that get down into the red zone, that's probably the big part of their success. They force teams to settle for 14 field goals. Here's Sam Swank. And this is no gimme. No, it's from the left half rush. mark. It's going to be a 27-yard kick. And the kick is up. And it is good. So Wake Forest gets three on the short field, hated by the big penalty near midfield, but then Virginia holds the line and forces them to kick the field goal. Three nothing, Demon Deacon. He who scores first usually cheers last in this series, and that's how it's looked since 1982. The winning team has scored first in 17 straight games. Virginia's won 16 of them. Wake has won once. I mean, when you're traveling, you come in a hostile environment, you get points on the board, kind of keeps the guy, fans in their seats. I think it's really important for the road team. And the band gets bored. Yeah, they yeah. You know the drill. <laughs> Seidenberg on the carry. Yeah, Seidenberg really. breaks it out. The kicker misses. And Josh Seidenberg, the fifth year senior, takes it all the way into Wake Forest territory at the 43 yard line. Boy, you talk about needed this in the worst way. We talk so much about Wake's explosiveness on returns. Zottenberg gets in. That's great block in the front. All the blue shirts, no belly floppers. Everybody standing tall, trying to make a difference. Big play for the Cavaliers. Brandon G comes out for the stop. It's going to be a 54-yard return. And we're getting ready to go. First and 10, Jamil Sewell hands off. And Michael Simpson. Picking up where he left off in the Maryland game, charges straight ahead. Let's take a look at this Virginia offense. And the aforementioned Simpson, who had a big day against Maryland, Rashawn Jackson, Maurice Covington, Staten Job, and Jonathan Stupar. Up front, Ian Yates Cunningham hosts a group of road graders with Monroe Albert Lipsy and Barker. And Jameel Sewell is the man who brings him out under center. He's a sophomore from Richmond, Virginia. He's completed 58 percent of his passes Simpson on second down looking for that first down yardage needs the 35 and he's very very close to it Jamil Sewell really looked like he was going to be in a, a two person race for quarterback but Al Gross said he tasted the competitive spirit Peter Lalich was breathing down his neck and he responded really did right before our very eyes and the young man you have to give him credit for exuding his leadership he kind of picked up his body rhythm so he seemed like he was so smooth that he didn't look like he was all the way into it. Well, he's there now. Third down and one at the 35. Here comes Sewell. He goes around his tight end who gets a nice block. That was Stupar. And that cuts him loose down to the 32 yard line. G and Arnu on the tackle. That's what separates him right there. The ability to get out on the edge and run. Boo Robinson leads the front line with Zach Stukes, Matt Robinson, and Jeremy Thompson. This is a great offense, uh, defensive line. Aaron Curry, two picks a week ago with Arnu and McClinic. And in the secondary, it's Alfonso Smith, who has four interceptions this season. Threes carried back for touchdowns with Patterson, Vaughn, and G. First and ten. There is Sewell. Has an option, and it's shut down. He had Michael Simpson at arm's length. <laughs> and Zach Stoops made sure he stayed at arm's length. But that's smart. See, what, what you want, don't blow that great field position. Don't make a mistake. That's okay. Don't be afraid to kick a field goal. And uh, that shows a sign of maturity. Uh, but his ability 
to run and to be a factor because this offense has been void of real playmakers. So when he takes the ball and takes control, the Cavaliers have a chance to be really good on offense. Second down now and 17 after the procedure penalty. Back to throw here. Sewell, plenty of time goes to Michael Simpson. Simpson now inside the 30 and is short of the first down marker brought out of bounds at the 27 yard line. Nobody on the tackle. Nobody, Steve Martin. It's more effectiveness now that Simpson has stepped in without having that quote go to wide out. Then see the little wrinkle. Nice accuracy. See when he's on schedule with his accuracy he's going to be tough to beat. That's and then this young man Mikel Simpson has just been short of spectacular. 13 yards on that game by Simpson who has been just kind of hidden in that backfield. Cedric Pierman got such a great start to the season and left with a foot injury and that created the opportunity here for Simpson. Back to throw Sewell throws for the corner of the end zone has Covington out there but Brandon G was in better position incomplete and it brings up fourth down and brings the field goal kicker on. They've got to take chances they've got to take chances at the end zone Matt Robinson 42 see they get there in tandem and you love the tattoo on the quarterback whenever you can hit the quarterback your team's chances of winning to me exceed. Chris Gold, who is 12 for 15 in field goals, 3 for 3 in 40 yards plus, will kick this one from 45 yards out of the hole to Vic Hall. And an attempt to tie this one up. Here's the kick. And it is good. So Virginia ties it up on a Chris Gold field goal. Up 45 yards. We'll be back after this word from your local station. Interesting situation. We have a field goal kick by Virginia. Chris Gold. That ties it up at three all. Let's see what he comes up with with a kickoff. The first time he kicked away from Kevin Marion and gave up field position. Marion, of course, leads the NCAA in kickoff returns. He returned the last week against North Carolina for 98. His last four kickoff returns, 80, 46, 98, 83. And I'd kick it away from, from yeah. him again. <laughs> I'd let him get real lonely. No yeah. question, man. Yeah. Now they yeah, got Kenny smart. Moore, who's a pretty good punt returner in the vicinity. He's taking a punt back for a kick. And again, it's a squibber away from Marion and into the hands of Moore at the 31. Moore hits the wedge and is brought down at the 47 yard line. First and 20 from the 13. And off goes to Bryant. Falls ahead. Big D'Angelo Bryant, a fifth year senior. Biggest 18 you'll ever see in the country. Oh, you bet. In that jersey. From New Ellington, South Carolina. <laughs> got a couple guys that uh, are really big in those jerseys. That's what Wake's got to do. Because you can't be that cute against the Cavaliers. You got to pound them right off the ball, right in their face. Bryant listed at 239. And that might have been in August. <laughs> <laughs> after practice. Yeah, in August. After double days. Final play of this first quarter. Score tied at three. Second and 13. The handoff to Adams, and he gets up to about the 27 yard line. He'll be well shy of the first down. John Copper, one of many tackles that he will make, and the first quarter has come to an end. Well, field goals by Sam Swank and then Chris Gold have placed us where we are in this crucial game in the ACC championship game scramble. Virginia and Wake Forest all tied up at three after one in Charlottesville. Back in Charlottesville, Scott Stadium, Wake Forest and Virginia tied at three all. A key third down coming here for the Demon Deacons. A third and seven on their own 26 yard line. Riley Skinner passed to the tight end. Nope. That's Tereshinsky. I don't think he got it. No, he didn't. Marked him out just before. And that's a sin. Nate Wiles in on the tackle, forced him out of bounds. A good tackle there. One of my pet peeves in football is that I just hate to see receivers and quarterbacks. Either the quarterback shouldn't throw it to a guy that hasn't exceeded the yard marker, and the receiver definitely shouldn't cut it short of the yard marker. You see it all the time on all levels, even the professional level. And to me, I just it just drives me nuts. Sam Swank is on to punt this one away from his own 33 yard line. He's standing back at the 18. Big ball back to receive for the Virginia Cavaliers on fourth and one. They'll take a long count. Virginia stays disciplined. Here comes the kick. And then Hall tells everybody it's short, get away from it, and it falls out at the 28 yard line. 
put in the fire out Steve following a turnover if your defense can come in and force the opposition to punt you flex your muscles our progress energy progress report we look at the first quarter stats there you go passing yards Riley Skinner is yet to strike in this one at least for much they've won the time of possession we've had one turnover so far in this game Virginia putting the ball on the ground to stop a long march wow. now, Virginia dodged a bullet they dodged because the defense is that good Wake, Wake's gonna have to take a couple chances in the air. You know, you just gonna you have can't, you can't throw underneath the yard markers. You gotta take a shot at it. After Sam Swank's 40-yard punt, Virginia sets up the 27. Rolling to his left, Sewell has time them. and was looking for his tight end Stupar. <laughs> he kind of gave that who me look. Yeah, but pretty good coverage too. I mean, sometimes you have to, especially where they are with the ball right now. It just didn't seem like they had enough separation. When in doubt, throw it away. Virginia didn't score enough points to take chances that may cost them field position or, or a quick six, a pick no, that's, six. That's true. I mean, you just got to know who you are. Well, they lamented giving up 29 points defensively to NC State last week. Here comes Mikel Simpson. Mikel Simpson all the way. Gets out to the 29-yard line. You take a deep breath when he turns the corner. Man, G uh, is in on the tackle along with Stanley Arnoux. I'm gonna tell you what you don't want to see if you're a defensive player, you're a linebacker. You watch big boy 71 Brendan Allen. You watch this kid come around here, and I'm gonna show you what is a nightmare for a linebacker. Now watch him come in, zero in, and right there. Oh, see that's you don't want that to happen to you. <laughs> big boy coming around there, stand up, be an athlete at six seven three ten. Worried about keeping your mouthpiece in. Third down coming here for Jamil Sewell in the pocket, scrambling out of there. Chased by Boo Robinson. Pass is complete. Did he have possession? Did he, did he have possession? No, he didn't. Out of bounds, incomplete, and it brings up fourth down. And for the first time this afternoon, Virginia's punter is going to take the field. We're so accustomed to seeing guys at that position make plays, but I was wondering, did he have the ball? No, no, he did. He did not. That's rare. So one of the top punters in the ACC, Ryan Wygand, steps to the field for the first time this afternoon. He's a senior out of Pasadena, California, and Kenny Moore is back to return. Kenny has got one of those non-offensive touchdowns, of which Wake Forest leads the ACC with nine. Ooh, and the punt is blocked. It goes forward, but it is blocked. And it rolls dead, and it is going to be recovered by Wake Forest. Alfonso Smith, the block on the punt. Man, special teams. Clean and did not hit the punter. That's the amazing part about it. So timeout on the field. Wake Forest gets a break. Their special teams created. Let's see if they cash in. Tied in three with Virginia. Now Wake Forest is in good field position thanks to Alfonso Smith's punt block. We get a detailed look at that here momentarily. Josh Adams is out of the backfield. Micah Andrews is in, and it's a direct snap to Kenny Moore. Nothing happened. And this play really, they tried it three times, either in direct snaps to Moore or to Marion. It really hasn't worked. Jeffrey Fitzgerald with a tackle. Let's look at this punt again. Well, the punt, you're going to find out what happens. It's going to happen right in here. What you're going to see is five foot nine, 198 pounds. Alfonso Smith comes over to center. And see, Aiken has got to snap it, then being in conscious of where he's at. I think his size and stature really helped him get in. Nice with the left hand, and then don't hit the punter. Very well done. Wiley Skinner back in under center. Handoff goes to Andrews. Micah Andrews. Fifth year senior from Duluth, Georgia, who missed an entire season. You need to take one of your turns. When Wake Forest is not successful on first down, they're off schedule. That's right. And as a result, they're more likely to have to kick or punt every time it happens. They have got to run the ball between the tackles, go hard nose on first down, try to get those three or four yards, then run their arm. They're, they're 90th in NCAA offensive statistics. So they're not a juggernaut there. It's their special That's teams true. that create points for them. So you're right, they're in a half to pass situation here. Riley Skinner, who completes 72%, out into the flats, it is complete. All that talk, and he's got the first down, and it's a true freshman, Jordan Williams, out of Jacksonville, Florida. 
what Wake Forest is very successful recruiting young men out of Florida. Man, they needed that play in the worst oh, way. Young man, get that watch long. We're talking what a, what a cyborg is. He's up against two guys, two pretty good players. He splits the double team. And look at the effort. The guy's crawling to get to the quarterback, forces him out. That's an All-American. First and ten in the red zone again at the 16-yard line of Virginia. Last time they had to settle for a field goal. Back to throw, Skinner over the middle. Wanted Kenny Moore, but he was covered by Byers. Billet, good pressure right up the gut. He's probably the least recognized of that down line, but I'll tell you what, he's an anchor. A nose tackle right in the middle. He's going to give him some pressure. Seeing no quarterback wants us. He can see that. He didn't feel it. He can see it. Second down and 10 coming. Bryant now joins the backfield as a fullback. Micah Andrews is the set as the tailback. More in motion. Andrews up the gut. And Andrews. He might have fumbled that football. Might have dropped the football. There's a scrum underneath. Virginia says they have it. I'm going to need another look on this one. When the referee is saying this makes ball. Yeah, Walter Davenport made the call. Said he was down by contact. This may be reviewed. That is their most effective play thus far. It's four times they've gone to straight dive. And they've, they've had some effectiveness. And None shot. of the orbit has worked. No, but they showed the orbit that time as they brought more around the yeah. back of the back. Do you know when the orbit works? In the fourth quarter. Yeah. See, they're going to get one or two big plays out of that, that gadget, and that's what it's all about. Third down and seven. Skinner back to throw. Pass is complete to Williams. Williams doesn't have enough for the first down. He's down inside the 10 and has brought down a yard shy of the first down mark. Boy, Lyle sent him on the tackle. Lyle had a chance to really disrupt that. He missed the play. You got to give Williams credit. He's been the only viable choice at outside wide receiver. Wide receiver. Here's long enough. See, if you get any substitution, they will move long. He's a welcome to committee. So he comes over to greet you <laughs> into the ball game. <laughs> Wake Forest into the red zone, but they're going to come up with a field goal or a check one anyway. And this will be a 25 yarder. Out of a hold of Ryan McManus, Sam Swank going for his second one of the day. Kick is up, and it is good. So Wake Forest takes the lead. They could not get seven off the great field position caused by the block punt. But they're up 6-3 back of this word from your local ACC station. Uh, take a look at our Suzuki motorcycle scoring drive. Seven plays. They got the ball at the Virginia 31. Settled for a 25-yard field goal. Took them 318 to do it. Sam Swank's second field goal of the day. He's got kicks of 27 and 25. Get ready to kick this one off. And back deep, of course. Andrew Pierman is their normal return man. He's joined back there by Josh Zeidenberg. Zeidenberg, last time around, brought one back for 55 yards. Swank to kick it off. This will be Pierman. Pierman is hit and shut down there by Williams. That's Anthony Williams out of Jacksonville. Neil Sewell gets to it to a tight end. That's Tom Santee who sat out the last two games. Santee is close to the first down marker out to the 31, a gain of nine. Hunter Haynes, redshirt freshman from Ponte Vedra Beach, Florida, on the tackle. There's Santee. He's a catcher of three touchdown passes this year, six in his career. He really helps them. I mean, they they work those hash marks, man, like like surgeons. They get yardage, but they've still got to find a way, both teams really, to create a big play. Second and one. Here's Simpson around the left side. That's shut down there, but Curry is there on the tackle, but it's good enough for the first down. Speaking of Tom Santee, our featured Suzuki way of life is that young man. He's a senior tight end and a Vincent Grady Award semifinalist. He's a sociology major. The Grady Award, by the way, is given for achievements in the classroom. In the community as well as on the football field. He's a 2007 team captain, and he's also a candidate for the John Mackey Award. And strangely enough, as are his teammates like him. First and 10, Virginia, with a minute and 11 left and two timeouts remaining. Blitz, Blitz. is on. And Sewell will get rid of it. Throws a bullet to Covington for the first down at the 40 yard line of Wake Forest. Number 80, Maurice 
Patrick Covington has been bothered by injuries all season. Smith on the blitz put the pressure on, but Sewell, calm and cool, stayed in the pocket. That was one of those Paplabon fastballs. <laughs> Red Sox, boy, he gunned it. One timeout remaining, so they need about 10 or 15 more. Sewell passes, and that's incomplete. Brandon G separates the ball from Josh Seidenberg. And this is the second time that G has done that. I mean, he brings a sledgehammer with him. And you know, you don't mind people catching underneath as long as you make them pay for it. And that's exactly what Brandon G has done several times in this ballgame. Stops the clock with 18 seconds left. Virginia with one more timeout. So you got to figure they'll save that timeout to get their kicker on the field, provided they can get themselves 10 or 15 more yards. Or a touchdown on this play. Here's Sewell. Pass is complete. It's going to be to Covington. He's got six. Touchdown, Virginia. Maurice Covington's first touchdown of the season couldn't have come at a better time with 10 seconds remaining in the first half. And that tells you all you need to know. First catch of the season, only his third, 14th catch of the year. Look at the shot right on the mind. Why, for some reason, there was something happened to where Wade stopped. You got a defensive back comes in and just flat out stops on the play. It's like he heard a whistle. And the first half comes to a close. That was a good one. Virginia trots to the locker room with a newly minted lead on a 39 yard touchdown pass from Jameel Sewell to Maurice Covington Covington's first touchdown reception of the season for Sewell it was his 10th touchdown pass of the year this crucial battle between a team that is tied for the lead with Virginia Tech in the Coastal Division and Wake Forest a game and a half behind Boston College in the Atlantic standing by with Wake Forest coach Jim Grove is our Mike Hawkwood. Uh, it's the kind of game that we love to see I'm not sure about a coach there and I know you didn't want to see that touchdown there do you know? No we've not done a good job offensively Mike we played pretty good defense special teams have given us some opportunities it's hard on the road if you don't take advantage of opportunities and we have not what do you have to do to get the offense going what would you like them to do better well we're not doing a very good job running the football right now I think our backs have to be a little bit more decisive and we just got it we just got to play better we're, and, and Virginia's defense is playing well we just got to play better on offense all right good luck second half that's Jim Grubb. His team has fallen behind here on the road, 10 to 6. A heck of a football game in Charlottesville. The colors of autumn displayed so magnificently here in the Charlottesville area as we take the turn into November. And our score shows Virginia leading Wake Forest at the half 10 6. Moments ago, our Mike Hogwood had this conversation with Al Groh, head coach of Virginia. Al, that was a real momentum gainer there at the end of the half with the touchdown pass. Well, it was a positive thing for us, Mike, but these two teams over the last two years are the two teams that have had the greatest success in the final minutes of the game. So this is a 60-minute game, and it's 0-0 zero to zero right now, and whichever team plays the best for the next full 30 minutes, not 29-30, will be the team that wins. All right, that's Al Gross, Steve. No, I couldn't say it any better. Al's got it all in perspective. Al's got a future in the booth. I mean, he really does. <laughs> I don't think you'll be here anytime oh, soon. Oh, no. No, 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 no. That'd be a long time away. All right, Sam Swank with the kickoff, and we're underway with the second half. Right, this is Andrew Pierman. Pierman at the 10. Pierman out the middle, and gets a nice return out to the 35 yard line. Demir Bolden in on the tackle for Wake Forest. So what Virginia did with the ball the first half. Not an awful lot until the end. Three downs and out twice. They had a block punt as they lined up the punt formation. A field goal at the top and then a touchdown at the end. So they scored in a first and last possession of the first half. Jamil Sewell tossing that 39 yard touchdown pass to Maurice Covington with 10 seconds left to go in the half. Here's the question Can they separate themselves? Well, a guy like Mikel Simpson, can he separate himself? That time he could not separate himself from Wake Forest defensive line. Tackle made by Zach Stukes and Boo Robinson. So the answer to that is no. What well, Coach Grow was very honest with us in saying that he expects us to come down to the final moments, which means they're not going to make big plays. You know, he's count, not counting on that. He's counting on the fact this thing going down to be in a test of wills and conditioning at the end.
Sorry, Javiel Sewell, first and ten. Pass to Covington is complete. Out of the 46-yard line, 10-yard gain. Stanley Anu put pressure on, but just not enough. This is why I like what Virginia's doing. Because Wake has put pressure on. They're surviving the pressure. Pressure burst pipes. But in this case, the quarterback is showing you that he can take the licking and still be productive. So brings him to the line on first down and 10 from the 46. Sets him, but Boo Robinson is there. Robinson, the sophomore from Monroe, Louisiana. Talked about him before. I like Boo, man. Boo is a baller. We haven't heard call his name as often as we did against Carolina. Ian Cunningham may have something to say about that, <laughs> but he can play. With Robinson on the season, two and a half sacks, and there's another tackle for loss. Backs him up two yards, makes it second down and 12. Simpson along setback, play action to him. Sewell to the flats, and he goes to Phillips. Phillips is tied in, tackled by Chip Vaughn, but he's close to another first down. In fact, he's got it at the Wake Forest 42-yard line. Well, you have to give Mike Grow, offensive coordinator, a lot of credit on this. Now, that was, when you get a play that open, that means he just called the right play against a defense that he just, he caught you on that one. You know, sometimes you get it. That time they got it. Goes for this 12th catch of the year. Tight ends this afternoon. And a bunch of them. Where's Top Covington? Three. So you need to get back to what worked. Sewell prancing out of the pocket. He throws a ground ball at the feet of Michael Simpson. Uh, Michael was bracketed, if you can call it that, by two linebackers. Screen, screen, tight end. You know what I mean? They just nibble at you. But when they went red ball, they attacked. You know, they went downfield to Covington. And that's what, you know, you, 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 you want to see that happen if you're a Cavaliers fan. Second down and 10 coming now. Ball at the 41 of Wake. Covington split wide to the right side. State and Job to the left. Left-hander deals to the left side. Going for Job this time, but Brandon G on the coverage. John Russell. More pressure. pressure. More pressure. This broadcast is a copyright presentation of Lincoln Financial Sports and Raycom Sports. Any use of this broadcast without the express permission of the Atlantic Coast Conference, Lincoln Financial Sports and Raycom Sports is prohibited. Steve Martin, Rick Doc Walker, Mike Hogwood here in Charlottesville. A beautiful sunny day. Third down coming up now for the Cavaliers. So far this afternoon, three for nine. They lead here 10 6. Fresh legs on the defensive line, Steve. Hulk in motion. Pass is incomplete. Intended, it looked like for Colt, but there were more white shirts in the area. Yeah, it, it, it really looked like obviously there was some confusion on it. Joe stopped. I think Sewell thought he was going to come across in a crossing route. But the bottom line to it is that it's not the red ball. See, when they went no. red ball, they were in attack mode. They were passing they, down the yeah. hash marks. And they went back, back to the stuttering phase of their offense. The short punter, Chris Gold, comes in. Wygant is the guy they need if they need distance. This time they want to plant it inside the 20, of which he's done 15 times this year. And this one was almost blocked. Let's see if he gets the curl on it. And adequately fielded down there at the three by Trey Womack. A beautiful kick by Chris Gold. Pens him down at the three yard line. That's a 38 yard punt. Timeout on the field. Has more wanted a notion to get to it, but uh, Virginia had it covered. And Wake is deep in their own territory, down four. Wiley Skinner. In the backfield, it's Josh Adams following his fullback straight That's ahead. Strong, he's still rolling. <laughs> the fullback and Josh out to the 12-yard line. It's going to be a gain of nine. Clint sent him on the tackle. Let's head to the sidelines and Mike Hogwood. You guys saw an injury in the first half that I think might be a big blow to Wake here in the second, and that's offensive tackle Joe Birdsong. It's at a place where they're not very deep. He sprained his ankle. He's trying to get it loose on the sideline, but the trainer told me he's very doubtful here for the second half. Leaves only Jeff Griffin at that right tackle spot, Mike. Second down and six. One of the 18 play action for Skinner. Sets up on a deep oh, he drive. Got he got him. And it goes to Adams. Adams is brought down at the 27 yard line. Darling on the tackle. 
Moves the chains again, another first down. Well, that's the biggest play thus far for the Demon Deacons. Good blocking up front, as always, Selvin and those guys do a great job. That time, Brickman was in tight. And then you get Josh Adams, your super fraud. Freshman to, to make a play for you. Nine yards on the game, brings up another first down. Great moving, this drive started at their own three. Skinner. Has some time, now scrambles out. And again, good coverage by the secondary. Of uh, Virginia, Billick forces him out of bounds after a short gain out to the 31 yard line. Pick up a well, the World Pack had some success last week against the Cavaliers with the deep ball, but they had people in position. They just, they, Evans was just on, yeah. and that's it, according to, to, to what they felt. But today, they've been better. That time, Alex Field is in for Jeffrey Fitzgerald. So they caught the werewolf out of the game and were able to get around that left side. And Jim Grove told our Mike Hoffman they need to get better on the ground game and it just hasn't worked for him so far today. Second down and nine. Double fake and the pass downfield. Intercepted by Darling at the 41 yard line. Razai Darling, the true freshman, picks it up to the 27. Brinkman makes the tackle. But the turnover now gives Virginia the ball an excellent field position at the Wake Forest 27. Yeah, nearly buys nobody open. Three blue shirts to one white shirt. So this is what this, this team and Jim Grove, man, he's got a terrific club. They know how to win on the road. Well, they won't panic. But that's not good. Dowling gets up. Now let's watch this again. Well, there's a reason why Dowling is on the field. I mean, you know, he's a young guy who makes plays. But in this case, nobody's open. But it's a great zone, poorly thrown, good hands. Cavaliers back on the doorstep. First and ten, They're on the 27. Sewell the throw has a man out there. It's his tight end Santee, and it's going to be knocked away. Alfonso Smith covering on the play. He took a shot at it. You got to do what you get, what you have to do. They went to the tight end on it, and there's no way. But if, if Alfonso Smith is locked up with you, no tight end is going to be. Create separation from Alfonso Smith, but I like it in theory. They were at least attacking. Well, a game like this, you got to get points. You, you have right to. now, if you drop and kick a field goal from here, yeah. it's 44. So, second down and 10, they ride Michael Simpson up into the hole and look at him push the pile down to the 22. But they're going to mark him down at the 24 yard line. It's only a short gain of about two. Our Aaron scoreboard around the ACC and around the country on a busy first Saturday. Of November. Our score here 10 6 in favor of Virginia. Oh, Ohio State, Wisconsin tied up. Clemson running it up on Duke. Of course, Kansas unbeaten there, playing at Nebraska, or home against Nebraska. Florida with an easy lead over Vanderbilt in the second. And Georgia and Troy tied at 10. Sewell on third down. Pass is complete to Cole. And he's driven out of bounds at the 19. Gain of six on the play. Tackle made by Channing Scrooge. Cole is a junior from Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Well, that's much better coverage. And I like the fact, nice, nice timing on it. See, you come out of the break, the ball is on time. Pretty hard not to pick up six or seven yards on that. Good operation by the Cavaliers. Doesn't get the first down, however. Brings up fourth down. But you feel, you know, Steve, you can feel momentum. I feel the momentum surfacing itself. For the Cavaliers. Well, the Cavaliers aren't going for a field goal here. They could get one, but they're not. They're going for it on fourth down and two. Ball at the 20-yard line. Play action for Sewell. He's pursued and that's incomplete. The pressure put on by Aaron Curry. Yeah, love the pressure. Still, I like the call. You know, you can't be scared to succeed. You got to take chances if you're going to be a champion. And in this case, you got to block him. <laughs> you got to put a hat on a good football player. But I like the fact that you got to take a chance. They have the lead. They're at home. They have field position. You have your defense. Go for it. Aaron Curry put the pressure on. A junior from Fayetteville, North Carolina, had two interceptions. Took one to the house from 77 yards. He has three for the season. Now you got to block Curry, but I still like it. First and ten. Wake Forest on third and eight. Long almost got it. Oh, he's going to get rid of it, and the pass is complete. And that is Kenny Moore. 
And that is the biggest play of the game, the longest from scrimmage for Wake Forest this afternoon. Mike Parker on the tackle. Steve, you talk about a game of injuries. And we hear this often. Watch 91, Chris Long, shot out of a cannon, comes around, nearly gets to the ball, then nearly gets to him again. Game of inches. Here's the coverage. And get, let's give Riley Skinner some credit too. He was unfazed by the pressure. 25 yards on the catch. First and 10. Skinner scrambling out of the pocket again. This time he's on the run. Billick chasing him. And now Vic Hall will throw him out of bounds a yard shy of the first down marker. So a nine yard gain for Riley Skinner that time out. Now, let this kid, who is maybe the most competitive kid I've seen the quarterback in this conference, let him start getting his juices flowing. Because he is one of those guys you go in the backyard with, and he just makes plays. It doesn't have to be drawn up just the right way, may not be glamorous, but in the end, his team usually wins. Well, he's coming off a shoulder separation, suffered in the first game of the year. He's come back rather nicely to hit 72% of his passes. And off now goes to Adams. Or this is going to be Micah Andrews, I believe. Andrews taking the mail up over the 45 yard line. Chris Long on the tackle. Micah Andrews gave him a punch against the Tar Heels yeah. last week. He can do that, change of pace back. But this is where your conditioning and your will to win comes in. This is the time where you're going to be tested. If you're 362 pounds and I can't run behind you for a yard, then I'll need to quit feeding. <laughs> See, that's my theory. Just cut off. No question. Only, <laughs> no double. No, no seconds. There's your offensive line. There's Chris DeGear. That's why you get seconds in the food line. Four for 11 on third down. They're third and inches. Third and a one key. Down 10 6 handoff first man through it. Bryant. They sent him behind there. All ACC center Steve Justice and Barrett McMillan. And Bryant got the first down. Like it was meant to be. First and 10 way forward. And the gear came off the ball. I'll tell you what, you're going to get some 34 front that bubble. You see those white shirts? Oh, yeah. They got movement, baby. They walked the dog on that play. Everybody. Feels yeah, good see, ball. again, it's, it's, you know, it's not that complicated. You got to dig in and go. Frazier on the backside. Great effort. First and ten. Wake Forest in Virginia territory at the 43. Skinner to throw. The pass is dropped. Or no, we got it. Jordan Williams hung on. Good tackle. Tackle made there by Chris Cook. Good tackle. Not much yardage on the play. Let's go to the sidelines now and Mike Hogwarts. Yeah, I'm here with Sonny Randall, former Virginia coach. You got a Wake Forest hat on. What's that deal on? Mike, well, I tell you what, Craig Littlepage, he saw me down here early on the sideline of Virginia AD. He said, if we take a picture of that, Sonny, you're in big trouble around here. All right, in a minute, I want you, you there's a reason you're wearing that hat. Steve, back to you. All right, thank you. Loss on the play of one, actually. Here comes Skinner back to throw on a first step. Pass comes to Adams complete, and he's close to the first down. He's going to be a yard shy. Down at the 34. Let's go back to Mike and Sonny Randall. All right, the reason, the real reason you got this hat on. Well, the head coach of Wake Forest. You know what? <laughs> Mike, Jim Grove, he got me fired three times. As a player, <laughs> as a graduate assistant, and as an assistant coach. But there's not a finer football coach in America than Jim Grove, I promise you that. And that's the reason Sonny Randall's on this Wake Forest sideline. Well, <laughs> you've got him fired three times. You know, Sonny's not alone in that fraternity. <laughs> Third down and seven. 10 6 Virginia. Wake Forest at the Virginia 30. Back to Wake oh, yes. Skinner. Great coverage. And Skinner gets downfield and may have made the first down and second effort inside the 20 yard line. The tackle by Jeffrey Fitzgerald in pursuit, but Riley Skinner makes things happen. He's fearless. He's absolute fearless. You watch Chris Long coming on the left side, round the corner. Great job of blocking in there, Griffin. And this kid, I told you, competitive, scrappy. You know, he just, he finds a way. Now the playmakers. The Winston Salem game. Getting it going. First and ten. All 
out to 19. Play action for Skinner. Looking for a man deep. There's nobody open. Will head to the sidelines and is marked out of bounds at the 12. Gain of six. Forcing him out. Cherashinsky threw a big block that helped him. Well, that's strong. And here's Wake Forest in the red zone. They've been there 31 times. They've scored 16 touchdowns, 10 field goals. And of course, our red zone brought to you by Superstar Batteries that are sold exclusively at O'Reilly's Auto Parts. Well, we know one thing that that stat can't show us, and that is they have not been able to bust a break so far. Oh, fumble on the snap. And Skinner looks like he got on it. They're still scrambling over it. <laughs> Boy, they're fighting for that one stake on the plate there. And it is going to be Wake Forest ball at the 12 yard line. Alex Field. Battling for the ball as well as Riley Skinner, but that cost them a down and brings them down to third down. And this is where Virginia has excelled. 27 possessions. They've only allowed 11 touchdowns. Now that may not Great count stat. today. They've allowed two field goals. Great step. It's, I mean, it's 50 percent touchdown to red zone incursion. Third down. One pump from Skinner. Still out in space looking for someone. Found the touchdown right there to Kenny Moore. The game breaker, Kenny Moore, in the first TD of the day for the Wake Forest offense. Riley Skinner. Man, you talk about a baller. Make him a gold medal baller. Because there's pressure. Long is going to come in from the right side. Give Drift Griffin a lot of credit. Here's Long. He's coming there. Okay, he comes outside. Billy gets a knockdown. Now that's way too much time. Nobody can cover super effort at the end, but not enough. Might have been Parker trying to get in. It's impossible. Skinner did a great job creating a new pocket. High snap. Here comes the kick. The point after is good. And Sam Swank adds another point. His 93rd career. Kenny Moore is a prime time bowler because it doesn't matter how many catches he gets, he's going to get the one you need. This is crunch. He gets open and makes the catch. That's a productive play. Swank getting ready to kick it away. And this is going to be Pyramid. Pyramid is up and inside and got hit that 20 to 13 yard return. Looking deep, wants his tight end. That was Phillips on the play. You know, the fact that Sewell can have back to back 200 yard pass games and not have an experienced set of wide receivers to throw yeah. to is amazing. It is very difficult to time yourself up with tight ends running streaks. Yeah. It's just hard. Or backs for that matter. Yeah, like unless the backs can run. It's just hard. But, you know, they're, they're dealing with what they have. They can't do anything about this until next year. You know, and they go out and recruit and do what they've got to do. But for right now, you've got to do what you have to do. Second down and 10. Flat pass out there to State and Job. And Job is pulled down after a short game. Aaron Curry is going to get up on the attack. State and Job and walk on from Austin, Texas. Gain on the play about six. Brings up second and four. And you take those six. You take them all day. Made the guy miss. Picked up an extra yard. This is going to come down to a yard here or there. An inch here or there. But they clearly have got to get more and more out of Covington, who made the big play right at the uh, end of the first half. You got to get a little bit more out of him. This is third down, actually, and four. And we're coming up to the end of the third quarter of play. So another quarter of football to go. It's been a good one by two evenly matched teams. They've both thrown their overhand rights. Now they'll see what else is left in the arsenal. <laughs> it's on now, baby. Back with the fourth quarter from Charlottesville. Wake Forest leading Virginia 13 to 10. Wake Forest steps ahead with the only score in the third quarter. A 13 yard touchdown reception by Kenny Moore from the hand of Riley Skinner and it's 13 10 Wake Forest over Virginia Virginia has the ball now. This is third down coming and a pass is complete. It's to Phillips. That's good. Call. No. 
That is good it. coverage. Chip Vaughn on the coverage. That is good coverage by Chip Vaughn. And we're seeing some good things from Wake Forest defensively in this second half. They get a key stop on fourth down. Well, the pass protection there is pretty decent. Under the pressure, Zach Stukes sitting yep. on the front porch of Jamil Sewell. <laughs> yeah, they, they've been there all afternoon. That's your ass. And there's no slight on Virginia's offensive line. I think they've done a great job. It's just both sides won't quit. Ryan Wygand into punt. Well, nice move. Smith nearly blocked that. And here comes a good kick, fielded at the 15 by Kenny Moore, and he brings it out to the 30 yard line. So a 15 yard return. Now on the tackle, Josh Zeidenberg, a 48 yard kick by Ryan Wygand, so he did his job keeping near that 46 yard average that he needs to do. And Wake Forest will get the football back with 14 44 left to play here in the fourth quarter. Near block of Ryan Wygand on the low snap. He gets it out of there before Alvonso Smith arrives on the scene. First and five. Skinner has time. Skinner has a receiver, Tereshinsky. And Tereshinsky down to the 45 yard line of Virginia. What a shot. Man, man, man. Good pass pro. Beautiful camera work. Boy, our boys are dominating on that. That didn't get any better, folks. That's just, that that is that is perfect. A 21 yard gain by Tereshinsky puts the ball at the 45 yard line of Virginia. 14 minutes left to go. First and 10 at the 33 of Virginia. And off inside now goes to Adams and he breaks free for some yardage. And now it's Wake Forest starting to wear down Virginia down to the 24 yard line. Gain on the play of nine for Josh Adams. And now he's starting to break free. And there's nothing wrong on this defensively. Chris Long did more than hold his ground. This was just Josh. You watch right here. See, that's a good stalemate defensively. Long, boom, he gets right by him. So he couldn't he couldn't get off of Lewis Frazier. And uh, the fake ahead to D'Angelo Bryant, and he is good for the first down at the 21 yard line. Fourth quarter football. This is when coaches to condition people for they talk about it during the offseason. They try to sell you on it, the winner weight system, to get yourself ready for moments like this. First down and 18 to go at the 30 yard line. The throw, Skinner, pass is caught by Demir Bolden. What a catch by Bolden at the 19 yard line. A gain of 11 on the play. Big call on the tackle. Bolden is 220 pounds. You wonder how could he take this hit and not lose the ball. His base, see, he takes that he's strong, lower body strength, held on to it. Great hands. Big play for the Demon Deacons. Bolden, his older brother, Antoine Bolden. You talk about a, a cyborg. Oh boy. Big brother is out of this world. Brinkman is split wide out to the top side and the slot there is more. It's second down and about seven. Here comes Josh Adams bouncing outside. Got a big block from Zach Selman to spring him loose. That held up Jeffrey Fitzgerald. Cook forces him out of bounds. It's not good for the first down but it gets down to the 16 yard line and it's a gain of about four. Let's go to the sidelines Mike Hogwood. Talking to somebody a minute ago who was in the Wake Forest locker room at halftime, and Jim Grobe said, of course, besides play like your hair's on fire, they changed their offensive philosophy a little bit. It's now pass first, run second. It's worked pretty good here in this second half. Mike, that's a great point. But they, the smart part is that they realized they had to do something different. Blitz. Third down. Here comes Skinner out of the backfield. He's brought down. By Womack at the 14 yard line. Man, they had four Cavaliers within arm's reach of Riley Skinner, and this kid still found a way to get out of it. He nearly picked up the first down. Brings on the field goal unit now. Sam Swank will come on and kick from the 21 yard line. It'll be a 31 yard field goal. This would be his attempt at a third field goal today. He's two for three already. Straight down the center of the field. As Wake Forest now looks to get something out of this long possession. Kick is up. 
And it is good. Wake Forest stretches their lead to six. 10-12 left to go on this fourth quarter of this critical game in the ACC championship race. Sam Swank has delivered his third field goal of the afternoon from 31 yards out, capping a 10-play drive. It's a great drive, but the Cavaliers are just one score away from the lead. That's right. Seidenberg oh, has been blown up at the 20-yard line. First and 10, Virginia, they're on 22-yard line. Jameel Sewell stands in the pocket and delivers a strike to Tom Santee. Santee now is pushed out of bounds, very close to the first down with the 31 by Kevin Patterson. Great play on first down. You pick up nine on first down any way possible, you know, it's a good play. What Virginia has to recognize is that they are one big play away from the lead. That's right. Not getting back in the lead. So you don't panic, you don't force anything, you just take your time. It's you Al got Gro time. Al Gro said this would happen. Oh, yeah. That well, these two teams are the best when it comes to taking a game away in the final seconds. Oh, it is. Food. And there's the pass complete to State and Joe. Short of the first down, but it's out to the 38 yard line. A nice gain of about six. Brandon G in on the tackle for Wake Forest. Rhythm now. You, you can just sense it. Sewell has not lost his timing sitting there on the sidelines while Wake Forest is starting to pick things up offensively. Facing Blue Robinson, Zach Stoops. Also out there. See all the true ballers. This is when they light up. Second down and four. Jameel Sewell pass to the sidelines complete. Michael Simpson has a first down at the Virginia 45 yard line. The clinic on the tackle. The Cavaliers went about 90 yards against the Maryland Terrapins on a drive where they had to score to win. And they kept drives alive. So you look at this pass pro. It's brilliant. You know, nothing spectacular. Chewing away, working the clock, rhythm, confidence, all these things necessary to be good on offense. Simpson with 58 yards in the air and six receptions. Back to throw, Jameel Sewell. And run the ball in a long time. Pass to the tight end. Knocked away. And a nice move by Aaron Curry. That could have been picked off. Yes. Intended for Stupar. Matt Robinson put some pressure on. Our game today, produced by David Berenger. Our director is Roy Alpers. Producer of our pregame show, ACC Football Today, Beverly Rumley. And its host, Mike Hogg. Accompanying me in the booth, <laughs> Doc Walker. <laughs> Uh, I meant to check with Roy on his uh, flight arrangements today. That's always competitive. Our first and ten line brought to you by SeatExchange.com, official ticket exchange partner of the ACC. Jameel Sewell stands in the pocket now, vacates to the left. And Sewell headed to the first down marker, and he may have. Forcing him out, Jeremy Thompson will help him chip on. It'll be at least nine yards on the play. And could be ten. Let's see what the mark is for Jameel Sewell who has been one man inspiration offensively for Virginia. When you're a senior, I mean this is it. Guys like Tom Santee, there's no time to talk about this. You know they had a collapse in November. Okay you got to make play. He had a nice block at the end of that play that allowed some space for Sewell to open up. Gain of 10 first and 10 at the 46 of Wake. Wake with a late shift and it's an open backfield for Sewell who's throwing on every down. The pass is complete to Michael Simpson. Simpson gets down inside the 35 down to the 32 yard line. A gain of 14 on the play. Moves the chain again. Again that offensive line. See Cunningham in here battling good hands. And see playmaker Stu Park. Another comeback. Nice block. Opening things up. See, it's not always all things that happen off the ball. Twice now, Jonathan Stupar has been a difference maker downfield. Michael Simpson, eight carry, eight catches, and 77 yards. There's Sewell, 18 for 40. And he'll keep it this time. And he's chased out of there and tackled by McClinic. Chance McClinic, the junior from Rome, Georgia, comes up to make the stop. Clance is good. I mean, he's made a lot of plays. I like McClinic. One hit. The key is hit the quarterback. Get him down on the ground. Inflict pain. <laughs> Try to throw him off his game. 
It shows you how tough Sewell is. I'm telling you. That's what's happened to him, and yet he's on the verge to put the Cavaliers up on the scoreboard. And because they squandered those two tight two timeouts, they need to get up there now. They do. 450 left to play. They have one timeout remaining. They trail by six. Jamil Sewell has time to pass. Mm -hmm. Great play by Chip Vaughn on the pass attempt to Tom Santi. Vaughn oh, oh. is a ball. Yes, he is. He's 6'2. He's 220 pounds, folks. I mean, this guy is a terrific athlete making plays. Now, is that so much to play that it couldn't have hit Santi's hands like that? He's had two breakups today. That's the second. That's nice. That's, see, that's, those are game changing moments. Yep. He's had six on the season coming in. Santi is in. Third down and 10. Key play for Virginia. Down by six. Watch Smith. Oh, big blitz on. Sewell gets out of the pocket. The pass is complete. He hold on. He did hold on, but it's shy of the first down. Yeah, but you're closer. Yep. Man. And G on the tackle. Stupar on the catch. That moves the down marker up to the 25-yard line. You want to know how good Wake Forest is at flying pressure? Sewell has avoided four sacks. And then what a catch. Best is taking it. Oh, he took it away from Brandon G. Stu Park wanted it more. We talked about a test of wheels at the beginning of this ball game. Who wants to get to Jacksonville? First biggest play of the game so far. Fourth down and two at the 24. Virginia trailing by six. They give this up, they may not get it back. Pass complete to Covington. Right in the slot for the first down at the 13 yard line. A gain of 11. Moves the change again for the Wahoos. They caught Patrick G. This time he was the paralyzed victim. Last time it happened, we saw two guys that just didn't seem like they didn't know what was going on. He never moved. 17 bodies, he just never moved. This happened before to the Demon Deacons. Hard to figure out. Third catch of the day for Maurice Covington. One for touchdown near the end of the first half. Pressure burst pipes. At the 14. Virginia doesn't need a field goal, they need a touchdown. And then an extra point to take the lead. And they don't need to need much on the clock for Wake Forest. Here's Sewell out into the flats. Got hit once, got hit again. A head for inside the five yard line. Well, he got beyond Vaughn, which is not easy to do. You think this sophomore out of Richmond doesn't get it, folks, and you are mistaken. This is how you propel yourself into the national spotlight. Sewell, the movement. I told you earlier, it's all about the legs. Look at the strength. Athleticism and more importantly, the desire not to be tackled. First and goal from the three yard line of Wake Forest. Virginia knocking on the door. A touchdown ties the point after leads. Here's Michael Simpson on a direct snap. And he is brought down at the two. Virginia getting in the red zone. They're in there now, down at the two-yard line. They, as far as I'm concerned, this is Brandon Albert time. Yep. 34 possessions, 19 touchdowns, 10 field goals. That's a look at the red zone, powered by Superstar Batteries, sold exclusively by O'Reilly Auto Parts. Cardiac Cavs, five of seven wins by six points or less. Are they fashioning another one? And running behind the big dog. Here's Simpson, and he does. Touchdown, Virginia. With 2.18 left, Michael Simpson takes it in from three yards out for the touchdown. And the Virginia Cavaliers score just like that on a 10 play drive. People are fine. It, it is easy to be critical when you win. Now, watch 71. See, getting it done. Eugene Monroe, Albert Lipsky, Cunningham. that side cutting. See, that's what it Let me go to what your strengths are. What a drop. All important point after for gold. Right down the middle of Virginia leads. The Cavaliers step out in front. Michael Simpson burst into the forefront from nowhere on the depth chart to number one against the University of Maryland on October 20th. He caught the ball for 152 total yards. His first touchdown run of his career. And he had 81 yards rushing. He also had the game winning touchdown with 16 seconds remaining. And that lifted Virginia to a 17-16 lead over Maryland. Gold on the kickoff. Will he find Kevin Marion? And 
what will Marion do with it? Marion at the one. Marion bursts through and is brought down. Nice tackle that time by Glasby. And that puts Virginia on top. Wake Forest with it all first and ten. Scrambling out of the pocket. Long and pursuing. He brings down Ryan Skinner for a loss on the play at the 24-yard line. But you can't be a champion without courage. And what Long represents now, all the primetime players, they play their best ball right now. And if you don't block 91, you have no chance to win this ball game. Chris Long on the tackle, brings up second down and three, 13. Simpson to throw, over the middle, it's more complete. And he gets it down to the 34-yard line. Nice run after catch. Yes. Nice run after catch. Needs nine, got nine yards for it. Vic Hall on the tap. A couple extra yards. It's going to make a difference. It's going to come down to that. Oh, yeah. And third it. down and two for Wake Forest. Oh, it's deflected. And will it be picked off? It's a loose ball up for grabs. It'll be incomplete. And now a decision coming for Wake Forest. On fourth down, there's only a minute 33 left. Fitzgerald was yeah, the man who hit the ball. No, I guess it's okay. Sensum is shaken up. And he's going to the side. That hurts him too because he's part of that three headed monster that rushes the passer. Boy, he got up. See, a lot of guys make plays when it doesn't matter. See, that is Fitzgerald making a play in crunch, long with the first sack. Fitzgerald with the tip. See, this is what they do. Another big play in this game, fourth down and two. Here it is for Wake Forest. Win streak on the line, pass complete to Bryant. Bryant gets the first down at the 46 yard line and Wake stays alive. Brian Glasby in on the tackle, stops the clock with a minute 26 left to go. Field and all they need is a field goal. They don't have to go the whole distance. That's right. 25 yards to glory. Second down and 13. Skinner back to throw, five man rush handled by the lineman, and it is out of the outstretched hands of John Tereshinsky. Just the direction Doc Bum they go in. He had enough for the first down, but it falls incomplete on the overthrow. And Brings that's up third down. And that's good coverage. They left him a small window of opportunity with the football, and he couldn't get it in. Again, the pressure so far, all but one play in this drive, the Cavaliers have dominated. Third down at 14. That you don't have to get it all in one. You got two downs yeah. to get the first down. So you don't panic on this. Two downs to get the first down. 108 on the clock. And a timeout remaining for both teams. Skinner. Oh, that's that should be called. Looks left. Pass complete. Brought down by Marion. And Marion is shy on the first down by a couple of yards, but it's a nice gain. Boy, that was a mugging on that play, too. But I tell you what. He got 11 on the play, so it's fourth down and two. How many big fourth down plays can we see this afternoon? Wake has converted two. Virginia one. Skinner complete. D'Angelo Bryant knocked out of bounds, and now they're in field goal range. With 37 seconds left to play, Razai Dowling makes the stop. The big fullback catches. Okay, again, last year they went to College Park and won a football game and won it physically to go to Jacksonville. They're not scared. They've been here before. 33 yard line. Still needs some more from Sam Swank's foot. Handoff now goes to Adams and he jukes his way to the 31. 32 seconds left to go. Both teams have a timeout. Neither one wanting to take one right here. 31 makes it a 48 yard kick if there's no fur further progress yeah, from you here. still want more. Yeah you want more you want at least five more to make it a little more certainty for Wake Forest or at least put the odds in your favor and now Virginia wants a timeout. With 17 seconds left to go Virginia uses their final timeout. They yeah. use their nice first two in the third. Second down and seven. 17 seconds left to go. Skinner hands off. Josh Adams got a yard and then pushed back. They'll mark him at the 30. And now Wake has a timeout and they're going to hold it until the clock gets down. And they're going to bring Sam Swank in. The clock rolls down to three, two, one. They'll stay at two and they'll bring Swank in for what could be the winning field goal. You think they wanted to be on that right hash mark? They did, did that by design? Well, you know, he kicked from the right hash mark, the one that would no, he kicked from the left, the one that yeah, hit the goal hit, Yeah, oh yeah that's, that's true. <laughs> oh, Swank man. three of four on the day. 
Those two coaches who both graduated from here. This will be a 48 yard kick. Swank today is hit from 31, 25, and 27. He missed a 45 yarder. Just barely. Here it comes. On its way. Missed it. Virginia wins. Swank wide right on a 48 yarder. And Al Grove, Virginia Cavaliers, live another day as dangerously as they've lived the last eight. And they'll have the Hokies here. They've got the Canes, but. It comes down to the final at this point where they will have to defend this stadium one more time because at this point it's down to that game. Well it's a round robin now. Yeah. And they've gotten themselves into it. Virginia Tech is into it now. Yeah. As all three teams Miami Virginia Tech and Virginia all play each other in the last four weeks. Mike Hotwood's down on the field. Let's go to Mike with Al Grove. Al you have now won five games by two points or less. That sets an NCAA record. It also says a lot about your football team. Well, the players were very determined, very mentally tough. This was a great game, Mike, and as I told you yes, at the half, these two teams have played the most last-minute finishes of any two teams in the conference. We have great respect for Wake Forest and their guts, and we said this was going to be a 60-minute game, not 59-30, and it clearly was. It, Jameel Sewell, a different quarterback than the last time we saw him here. What a game he had for you today. Well, he did. He had his rough moments, but he did what a good quarterback's got to do, and he stepped up when it needed to be done. And Hey, I'm, I'm, I'm proud of my team, and I'm proud to be part of them. And Chris Long also on defense. He was not to be denied that. Well, he's the heart of the team. He really is. Al, congratulations. Great win. All yeah. right. Well, Jamil Sewell said it. We're a step closer. We want to be where Wake Forest was a year ago, and this play delivers it for them. Sam Swank for 48 yards. The field goal attempt was long enough, but it was wide right. Clock runs out. Virginia wins again. As Swank sees it just edge to the right, he missed his second field goal of the day, both of them in excess of 40 yards, and the party's on in Charlottesville as the Virginia Cavaliers offset their loss at NC State, get back on the winning track, and they're very much in the thick of things for the trip to Jacksonville. They stay alive as they defeat the Wake Forest Demon Deacons, ending their six-game winning streak. The final, Virginia 17, Wake Forest 16.